Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, and it's Monday, January 28th, and I'm here <laughs> for another update. Got a little bit of stitching done this week, and hopefully I can get more done going forward. I always feel like I don't really have time. Um, yesterday was very busy, and I only got a half hour in the evening. Um, I didn't even know I was going to get that, so I was thankful for that, but I ended up um, not working on my temperature piece just because I wanted to get at least a little bit of time on the project I had picked. So, I don't know. Every every day, there's always something. And I'm sure all of you could attest to that. <laughs> so, first off, let's pick a winner for the Caterpillar Cross Stitch Seize the Day um, kit that I was gifted to give away here. And... It comes with 28 count Ada in like a nice sandy khaki color and pre-sorted floss for the kit. And it also comes with a really cute enamel needle minder. And the first clue has come out. So whoever wins this, I'll forward you the first clue. And then from then forward, um, you'll get it directly from Sally at Caterpillar Cross Stitch. So I had a 147 entries, which is possibly the largest one I've ever had. I'm not sure, but I, I wrote all the names down. This is my old one. Starting with this page and all of this page <laughs> and then into this page. So, I have just Googled but I have Googled um, 1 to 47 for the random number generator. This is the number 5 that was already there, so I haven't actually pressed generate yet. So I will press generate and we will see 80. So let's see. Woo! Link is my homeboy. Heather, you won. <laughs> it's always fun when I recognize a name. Either somebody who makes videos like Heather does or somebody who comments a lot. So congratulations. Heather, I will be contacting you because I know it, this sal has already started. My cat's going to come up and make trouble. Um, so I want you to be able to get started as soon as possible and not feel like you're always behind. <laughs> the first clue has come out and it's adorable. It has a little hint of this vibe going on in it. Um, and so I will comment on your comment as soon as I can, maybe later today. I don't know if it'll be before or after I post the video. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but congratulations. That's really fun. And I will mail this to you um, maybe tomorrow. I could get to the post office. So um, congratulations. That's fun. So now we can go through what I've worked on. I don't have any happy mail this week. Um, nothing new has come in. Um, but I did a little bit of stitching. So when I saw you last, I was working on Midsummer Roses, which is my oldest whip. All right, kitty. She's down here. She's going to have a nice little nap while we talk. <laughs> so I was working on Midsummer Roses by Paula Vaughn. And this is my oldest whip. I had posed a question to you if I should work on it every month or go back and forth with other old whips so I don't get burnt out. And the majority of you said go ahead and work on it every, every month because it needs to be done. And you'll feel so good to have it done, and I agree with you. I have also heard a good good comments by a couple people that said like maybe alternate, do do um, the roses and then a different one and then back to roses and then a different one and then back to roses. Um, or what's just work on it every month until I'm not feeling it and then switch it out just to keep, so I don't fall out of love with it. So all of those things are possibles. I have also changed my plans for the year, <laughs> um, which I'll talk about at the end. So. We'll see. At this point, I'm planning to bring it out every month. So if at some point in the future I'm just sick of seeing it every month, I might switch it out for a month or two and then come back to it. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see how I'm feeling. If I'm making significant progress every month, it might be fun to keep going on it. But so far, it feels like every time I bring it out, I don't get the time I'd like on it. And, I, and it just seems like to drag on and on and on. Like, really? I'm still not done with this? So with this one... Same thing happened, didn't have as, as much time as I'd like. Sorry, she's bonking. <laughs> she's rubbing her head against the iPad case. Um, and so as it was, I 
did not end where I wanted to. I only, I, I just said I wanted to finish the lighter pink flowers all the way, if possible. I got halfway done with the f one of two colors that I needed to do to meet that goal, and my time was up, which is really discouraging. So, um, what I ended up doing, I also didn't finish everything I wanted to do on my um, son's piece, Dragon Ride, which was just a day, one day piece. And so what I did on Friday, which was the, supposed to be the first day of my next project, is I decided to wait on that one and spend that day instead finishing up at least the color I was working on on this one and then the string I was working on on the dragon. And that felt good to at least get to a better stopping point. So this is what Midsummer Roses looked like before. And here it is now. Not a ton of change. <laughs> But I did finish the medium pink on on all of these flowers. So I didn't get those flowers all the way done, but I do I really want to give this some priority going forward when it when it comes out to spend to make sure I get time on it throughout the day and not let other little silly frivolous things take away my stitching time on those days. So I would I am going to bring it out again in February, so stay tuned. But that's how far I got on it this time. And then I had one day on Dragon Ride by Teresa Winsler. Which is this one. And I wanted to work on this, um, this tealy color that was in his, in his wings. And so I did. I, oops, not those. I've got a lot of things back here that are all on, on um, light blue cloth. <laughs> so they all get confused sometimes. Um, my length of, of thread is pretty long. And so I just did one length of thread and finished it up on the next day. And so this is what that looked like before. And here it is now, which is fun, more capped. So I finished just this one and then I realized this color was over here so I just kind of hop skipped over, just trailed my thread a little bit and worked down his tail. And this is actually where the bottom border is so that's as far down as the design goes. And, and then looped it back up and this is his foot. So there's a little bit of blue on his tail, and there's a couple more pinions in his wing, and then there's some more on his body down here of this color. So I'm going to keep going on that color every time it comes out, because I like the structure it's giving. Because for example, if I wanted to keep working the border down, I would know wh where to start cutting across, because I have these... Um, sit down, cat. I have these stitches which are already all the way down touching the border. So finally felt better letting, getting, oh my goodness, <laughs> she's being obnoxious today. Um, finally got um, enough done on that that I was happy to put it away. Again, one day, one day is not that much, but it is nice to know it's going to come back out again next month. And so that's that. And then I worked on my letter H fairy for my niece and this one was another one I thought sorry she keeps bonking it I don't want to make you guys be sick kitty stop um I didn't think I was gonna get any time to work on it and then I realized a little bit later that oh hey I do have some time <laughs> we, have, we have a someone here who wants to steal the show I think so I am sorry <laughs> But this is what H Fairy looked like before. Come on. Yeah. And this is what she looks like now. I was able to do what I wanted to do, and I fixed her skin and started on her dress, and then did a little bit of the H bar. Um, there's more of her dress, but I did one, one length of floss using Victorian Motto 
shades of mustard, I believe. And so I am very happy with one day on that. <laughs> she likes to be the center of attention, apparently. She's purring too, I don't know if you can hear that. And then my next project was is supposed to be Friends of the Library, my needlepoint kit. So this is the one that I missed a day on because I chose to finish up progress on those other two. So this got a teeny bit of time yesterday and hopefully a little bit more time today. And since they're half stitches, um, it does go a little bit faster than cross stitch. Um, but so I'm, I'm hoping that tonight I can spend a little bit more time on it and have get some progress on it. So this is what that looked like last time. And here it is now. Um, I finished this charcoal right here because that's what was on my needle. And then I went over and picked up some black and did this chunk. I have one more length or one more um, row down here of black, which I'll need to get a new string for, and it's also up here, so I'll probably do that, and it's here. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and do an, at least one more length of black, and then do whatever this is, maybe, if I still have time. So that's the plan, because I'm going to try to completely finish it horizontally before, you know, as I move up. I'd rather move from the top down, but for some reason I started with that book, and I don't want to miscount and have it have to fudge things, because... That's just not how I roll. <laughs> I like just following the pattern and knowing it lines up and adjusting things stresses me out. So I'd rather not have to do that. So hopefully I'll get a little bit more time on that today. And then this week I've also done a little bit on my temperature pieces. I forgot to pull those patterns out. And this is how I am doing mine in case anybody wondered. So this is my temperature balloons I'll talk about first. And I, I have been enjoying going back and forth on these. I'm doing every other day. And except for yesterday, it's been working pretty well. Um, so I've managed to keep caught up on this. Today should be the day um, I work on my balloons. So I'm fairly well caught up, but I have two days I could work today, which I haven't done yet. How I am t marking my temperatures, in case anybody cares to know, is I've used the brownish color picture that comes with it, that, and I'm marking it on there because the colorful one, I want to be able to show you guys, to show you what the pattern looks like, um, so I thought this was a better one. And I have it stapled to the, the, the symbol key with the temperatures so that I can have this like ready to reference what color I need. And then this one has, you know, the chart stapled together with it um, in two separate sections. So that's that's how I've been doing it, if that makes any sense to you. <laughs> if not, I can explain it more um, in detail. But that's what this is what that one looked like before. And here it is now. And I have, like, uh... Up to, two more can be stitched today, but I have not done that, that yet. So I have almost the third row done. This is the hottest. This was 72, and these these here were like 70, 69. Um, and I kept forgetting to mention I'm I stitched the basket because I had some time the other day, and I just figured I'd go ahead and do that. Um, I'm stitching this in Gentle Arts Apple Cider, which is variegated, and to help it give it more texture, to look like a basket. So I have it charted in DMC because I don't want to like <clears throat> keep anyone from feeling like they can stitch this if they don't have fancy floss, but I thought it would be fun to give it a little texture. Somebody else I had heard was going to try to do like a, a basket weave? No, not a basket weave. Some sort of <laughs> specialty stitch. I don't think basket weave stitch is right, but it could be to make it look more like a basket. Um, so just some ideas if you're interested in making this more interesting you could use some fancy floss or try a specialty stitch or something um, but I decided to do a fancy floss and I'm stitching that I stitched it one stitch at a time to help make the variegation show up a little bit more 
So I think I like how that turned out. And I think I should have plenty of that floss left. I bought that floss for my um, these little guys, the monthly Snowflower Diaries um, Joyful World Sal because it was used in a lot of the borders. Um, and I still had some. And since I'm doing this one over one, it, there's, it seems like it's going to last pretty well. So my other quilt piece. Similarly, I'm keeping the cover page clean. And then I have another one, which I had the, black ver the dark gray version of the sashing. And that's the one I'm marking up to put my temperatures on. And I also wrote in the margins, like the days, 5, 10, 15, 20, all the way down to 30, just to keep track um, of how far I am. And on both of these, um, when I get to where I've caught up stitching it, I'll like do a little line. Um, I'll mark it so I know that's how far I finished. Um, so that I know how when I come back to it, I don't have to like count, okay, which block am I at and which temperature am I supposed to be doing now? And so I just put a line, like this is how far I stitched. So everything after that is new. So that's kind of how I've been doing that one too, to try to keep that somewhat organized. I have done a little bit on my Little House Needleworks months. I have some little last bits in here because I was working on it away from home a little bit. So there's that one. I'm doing October. And this is what that looked like last time. And here I am now. I think it's turning out pretty cute. Not a ton of progress, but still some. I finished the gate. I got all the brown done and even the little dark bits with the, the hinges and the latch. Then I stitched October and I'm starting in on the crow. So I thought that turned out pretty cute. Still got that dark color on my thread. And this week should be a lot better with stitching on this because my, like I mentioned last time, my daughter got sick last week. And so she didn't go to school for three days um, because she, her, it, she was pretty sick. It was really sad. Um, she's better now. And because she was sick for three days, I didn't go early to the kindergarten pickup and have to wait in the car for almost an hour to till my other kids got out. Um, so that cut down on my travel time on that piece. But this week is back to normal. My daughter's better. Nobody else got sick. So I'll be having a normal day, um, picking her up early, waiting in the car with her, helping her with her homework and stitching. So <laughs> that's the plan. Um, I also got a tiny bit done on Storytime Sampler. This factors into my plans as well because of the tiny bits I've been getting and it's really annoying because it should be done by now. <laughs> so this is what this looked like before. And here it is now. Getting closer, but not done. So here are my two blocks I'm working on. I did the dark green last night, so there's the wreath done in that book. Um, yeah, I don't think I have any, I don't have any thread on my needle right now, so I had just finished the colors. I got the red done, the lighter red. Um, it's about it, I think, this week. This is pretty sad. So, um, am I ready to talk plans? Oh, no, not quite. Well, yes, I guess, I guess I'm kind of ready to talk plans. I'll talk plans for the rest of January and then I'll talk specifics about February and and the foreseeable future until I feel like changing my plans again. Um, today I'll work one more day on Friends of the Library, the, the Needlepoint kitties, and then I have planned three days on Knitting Woman because this is another one that feels cozy to me for the Full Coverage Fanatics uh, monthly theme. And the one thing that I'm a little bit sad about with my new plan is that it doesn't really address these themes that much. If I get to a good stopping point on a project and I need help choosing, then, then it might factor in. But at this point, I think I'm going to focus more on specific goals on projects rather than trying to fit them into the themes, which is a little bit, a little bit sad, but I think for where I'm at in my stitching right now, it's kind of where I need to be. So... 
And this is what Knitting Woman looks like now. This is 22 count Ada. And this is a golden kite pattern. I'm stitching it two over one half stitches. And I have the top row completed and I'm working on this um, second row which ends like about, I guess about, yeah, like about here. So this is into the third row a little bit just because the color kept going. And I'm doing this cross country. Um, but I'm choosing my colors um, as I go and then just stitching them till the thread's done and then coming back, you know, and filling in the space. So I'll get three days on this until the end of the month. And then my January, I mean, then my February plans will start. And what I'm thinking of doing is, okay, first off, I had some time this week to plan. So I went through and I filled in all of my whips into my categories that I had done before where I had my um, my six daily pieces, water, Waterfall and Yosemite, Midsummer Roses for my oldest whip, and then a Heaven and Earth Designs, a Golden Kite, another full coverage, and a couple others, and I had like three days on everything except for a Waterfall which had six days. Um, I filled in everything according to the Full Coverage Fanatics monthly themes um, as best as they could and made sure that every whip was touched at least once throughout the year. Some had two, a few had three. Um, and I managed to do it and it was kind of fun to plan that. However, when I got done, I realized a lot of the projects that are some of my favorites will only get three or six days the entire year. And that is not really enough to do anything, really, um, to get to any sort of milestone, with especially with how busy life can get. So that's, that's, that was a little sad to me to make that realization. So I remember hearing Jesse Marie talk about and I think other people have, have done this too. Um, Dee Stitcher has put away some of her old whips. Jessie has temporarily put away some old whips. Maybe even Ann P has done this occasionally. Um, and so I was looking, I, I updated this paper. This is all of my whips. I have 54 active whips, including these monthly ones as one whip because that's, I only, only do one, one at a time and I'm rotating them. So, and this also includes my adventure weights and my story time sampler right there, which are, should have been done last year. <laughs> and they're not. So, um, 54, and I can't, I can't give them the love that I would like. I would love to be able to touch them all in one year, but you will see that I have a lot of large projects. So three to six days on each of these just, I don't know, makes me feel sad that they're not going to get the time they want and I'm going to end the year with 54 whips again. And that's pretty sad going forward, especially since I want to start a bunch of things in 2020. So what I have decided. I talked with Jessie Marie, as I said, and, and, and asked her, so what her, what her plan was really for like abandoning, not abandoning, but like shelving some projects and focusing on others. And she had said her current rotation, if you, if you're caught up on floss tube, you probably know more about this than I do, but I'm still a month behind, I think. Um, she was picking like one piece from each designer and working on that one until it's done and then f rotating until it's done or she meets her set goal for that piece like a page finish or um, a, a section finish or whatever her goal would be then she can move in another piece from that designer so she's not going to work on multiple mirabilias at the same time she's going to focus on one until it's either done or she's met her goal same with heaven and earth designs and stuff like that and I really resonated with that, at least for now. So what I decided to do, um, roughly, is my six day projects I'm gonna continue to do because I really like how that's going and it keeps things fresh. 
Um, I'm not stuck working on the same piece forever because every once in a while it's punctuated with one of those single day projects. So I, I like that. I'm going to keep doing that. The six daily projects, which are mostly for other people, I'm going to continue to do. I'm going to spend six days on a golden kite. At the moment, it's going to be Waterfall in Yosemite until I get that top row finished of the sky. Because that's my... I would love to get that sky closed up and finished, that top row finished. And then I think I would feel in a good place to move on for a short time. So at this point, I'm going to bring out Knitting Woman after Waterfall and finish the first page. And it de kind of depends on um, where I get to in the three days at the end of this month. But since this is technically going to my mom when it's finished, I would like to give it a little extra attention. So depending on where I finish at the end of January, if I'm like finish a page or get really close to a page, I may want to finish the next page over before stopping um, with this new rotation. But we'll see, depends on how far I get um, on it in January. But in, Feb in February, I may not get to it because this is gonna be It'll be waterfall every month for six days until that top row is finished. So if it takes me two or three months to finish that top row, then I will move on to Knitting Woman and work on a page finish. With Heaven and Earth Designs, I'm gonna focus first on furry animals, the little tiny one that I was working on last year. Um, I actually, I was doing this for 100 Days of Hade and it's, it's very close. But working on it just a, a tiny bit every day, like 15 minutes a day, it wasn't getting attention. So I'm going to work on this for six days until it's done. And that will feel really good. Oh my goodness, that will feel good. And then when it's done, I can pick up another Hade. And at this point, I picked the Nativity, which is my Christmas one. And I didn't get to it this Christmas, which made me sad. And I'm like one and a half columns until I get a page finish. And that would feel really good too. So that's the other, the next hate I had picked out. After that, I'll have to wait and see what time of the year it is, what my, um, what I'm feeling, and or what the um, monthly theme is in Full Coverage Fanatics. If I need help, get help deciding. If I like a few different options, I might use the theme to help me pick. But I'm kind of gonna um, try to focus on what I really want to get done and what I'm sad I haven't finished yet and try to get those things done. So this is a good year to do that. And I've also picked a fancy lady category, which I'm not saying Mirabilia because my lavender and lace Nantucket Rose would fall into this category even. So I don't want to say Mirabilia. I'll just say fancy lady because most of them are Mirabilias, but there's that one lavender and lace. Um, and if I love this, does this, plan going forward into 2020 than that Joan Elliott piece I showed you last week with the like five ladies dancing on the maypole um could count for that too and that could go into the fancy lady category um currently I have Stargazer as my favorite that I've been dying to work on again and I have my goal written down as finished but I'm kind of debating on whether or not I want to finish that before moving on or get to a good stopping point. So I've given my fancy ladies six days as well <clears throat> because they, they need a little bit more love as well, just like the full coverage pieces do. So it might depend on how far I can get in six days. If I feel like two or three months would be enough, um, four months, something like that, like then maybe I'll just continue to try to finish it before I pull out my next one. Or I might say like top half of the chart, bottom half of the chart, that kind of thing. So we'll have to wait and see on that one. Um, the next one I thought I would focus on is Villa Mirabilia, which is one of the older ones that I have going. And it's enormous, but it's actually pretty far along. Um, so I think that would be another one to focus on. And then I have two categories for other. One of them will contain my oldest whip until it's finished. Every month I'll give it three days until it's finished. And then when it's done, I'm gonna focus on some of these other pretty ones, Twisted Band Sampler, Winter Wonderland, Chatelaine, Heritage Nativity Sampler in the beginning. I may adjust this if my desires change before then. Um, but those are some of the things that are all like really fun. I love these, I wanna keep working on them. And for these, like, I want to finish this one. This one, I think I'm going to finish the 
orange before moving on. This one I'll finish a band. This one I'll finish a band. That one I'll finish one of the animals. So I'm not going to try to finish these before moving on. So my rotations through these other chunks I think will be quicker, except for this first one, will be quicker than, um, than trying to hope finish the whole thing. I'll just get to a nice Yay, I finished the whole little shepherd scene on the nativity sampler. Then I can move move on to the next one and get to some sort of, you know, highlight and joy before moving on. This other category, I'm going to start with story time sampler and get that thing done. <laughs> oh my goodness. Potentially three days or less is all that could take because it is, I just don't spend any time on it. Then I'm going to go to the Adventure Awaits Caterpillar Cross Stitch Style and finish that last clue, which I haven't even started yet because Christmas happened. And then I'm going to do Hoot, which is by Bent Creek, which is for my daughter's kindergarten teacher. Teacher Appreciation Week is like, I think, the beginning of May. End of April, beginning of May. So once these two languishing salves are finally finished, I'm going to focus on that one and get that one finished too because... <clears throat> that's a priority as well. These I don't think will take me that long. This one probably one rotation or less. This one maybe one rotation, maybe two. Um, and then High Hopes is the next one I think would be fun to do a little bit on. I say finish the fence area. I don't, don't plan to finish the whole thing. I, I want to enjoy it for a little bit. But I do want to focus on this one because I was telling Leah the aviatrix stitcher leah noel the high hopes kind of remind this is the kitty one i started on new year's eve where the kitty is looking out at the garden and all the birds and bees and flowers and everything um by just nan it kind of reminds me of my cat cinnamon and she's 15 and i want to stitch it and enjoy it while she's still here because i don't know how long she will be with us um she's still fairly healthy but she's old so you never know. <laughs> and so I I think it would be nice to stitch on it while she's still here and kind of be a, a, a piece that would honor her, you know, because she's been with our family for so long. And then the next one, I just kept thinking about other things I'd want to work on. And Tea and Cakes is the little Doreen Jones sal that was like probably two years ago now. It's got six little quadrants with teas, teacups and teapots and cupcakes and different things. What did I say? Finish the border and one section because those sections are highly multicolored and backstitched and everything. So I don't necessarily want to force myself to finish the whole thing, even though it's fairly small. I think I'll just let myself do that and then move on to whatever I'm feeling after that. So this is kind of my plan, which will take me, you know, an undetermined amount of time to finish to work my way through. But I think I like the thought of seeing progress and knocking things off of this list so I feel like I have room to enter in some new ones when I can in 2020. So that's my plan and I also had some ideas on Mania which I had talked about before. I was thinking I'd do 19 days on 19 different vignettes on the stitching shelf and then I could still keep my six single day projects, do three days on Mirabilia and three days on Villa Stargazer and Three Days on Villa Mirabilia for Mania, uh, Mirabilia Mania. The other thought is, I just, this morning I was thinking I could just take a break from my six daily projects and put in two more Mir Mirabilias. And then I could spend, do my six, you know, new starts of the sections in Stitching Shelf <clears throat> and Mirabilia Mania by working on four different Mir Mirabilias that month. So that, that might be even more fun than continuing to have these in here. So we'll wait and see. It doesn't include monogamous mania at all, unless I put waterfall or midsummer roses into this slot. So this six day projects, I kind of like the thought of doing the vignettes and stitching shelf and some mirabilias. So this one is the wild card at this point. Um, so unless I completely overhaul everything, which is still possible. <laughs> um, I may choose to be monogamous, monogamous, do some more focused stitching for those six days on either Midsummer Roses or Waterfall in Yosemite if I'm still at those 
working on those goals at that point. Um, or I could do two more Mirabilia's and f- spend three days on four different fancy ladies. Because that could be fun, too. Because there's a few different people who are working on Mirabilia Mania. So it'd be fun to join Terry Lee in the stitching shelf and and then do the Mirabilia with Larna, the ladybird stitcher, and Ozzy, Belinda, the Ozzy stitcher, and somebody else. Jesse Marie, maybe, is doing that? Oh, the other thing with Belinda... Going into February, I made sure she's having, she mentioned before at some point she's having the Aussie Stitcher, Belinda, she's having a birthday sal on the 22nd of February for her birthday to work on a Mirabilia because she's going to work on a Mirabilia that day. I don't remember which one she's going to work on if she had decided yet, but I made sure to plug in Stargazer's chunk to cover that day. So my stargazers, I'm planning at this point to work on it from the 19th through the 23rd. So it'll kind of overlap her birthday so I can be sure to participate in that. So I made sure to do that. So going forward into Jan- uh, February the 1st, I will work on Simpsons again. And surprise, surprise, I have not had time to go through and do any more new charting. So Lord willing, that would be really nice to get to sometime this week, um, before the first, so I can, I think I have most of the top row done, so it would be nice to work a little bit more down here, so that I could maybe finish, like, color complete throughout his whole head, like, it's just annoying having to stop right here. (laughs) So, this is what this looks like now. How I am with that. This is for my husband. It's currently still a surprise. At some point, the surprise might be broken, but I'd like to keep it a surprise for as long as possible. And and then the second is for my son, his touchdown piece, which I'm still working on. And I did the recharting last time, so now I can just stitch, which will be really nice. This one is here now. So I can work on more of Charles, get him looking a little more normal. It would be fun to finish up some more skin and get his helmet head area backstitched and start in on the jersey um, more so he's not looking so alien. <laughs> so, oh uh, yeah, that, that color is a lot better back there. It's a, it's a nice warm. It's a little warmer even than that, but it's, it's a nice warm blue. But in order to get close and see the stitches, a lot of the blue goes away. Um... So that's what I'm going to do on the second. And then the third through the ninth, I will work on Waterfall and Yosemite minus the time I will work on my S Fairy in, on the seventh. So, because um, that will give me six days on Waterfall. And that's this one that we've talked about. I'm going to give it, it's, it's another six days. the beginning of the month so here's where it's at now and like I said my goal for this one until I switch will be to work on it six days every month until this top row is finished and I got like a column and a half done last last time so but there were some days where I focused on other things instead of stitching so it would be nice to you know get these those two sections touching that would be really cool. This is on 18 count Ada, one over one, or two over one, full full crosses, which is a very nice coverage. I really like 18 count. Um, especially if you're if you're new to full coverage and you or you're new to high count fabrics and you want to do a full coverage, but you, the thought of 28 or 25 count kind of scares you, do 18. It's beautiful. I like the coverage on the dark colors as well as the light colors. It's not too bulky. It's good. A lot of my new, a lot of my original full coverage pieces are on 18 count, and they're they're still very lovely. The problem with some projects <clears throat> is a project will be so big that if you do it on 18 count, your piece is going to be like you know, the size of the room. And I have a couple pieces like that. Um, so then I started finding the, the smaller counts to make the finished size a little bit smaller. So if you can find a medium-sized piece, do 18 count. It's good. Um, and then I'll come back to you. 
hopefully next Monday. <laughs> so I think that's all for now. Um, I am happy to get this recorded and hopefully you enjoy your stitching this week and I can hopefully get some stitching time today also. Have a lovely week and Heather, let me know your mailing address and your email address and I will get you your chart and your kit and talk to you later. Bye.